discussing about sustainability, we need, we need to think about uh, waste management. So in this green skills module regarding sustainability, it's really important to discuss about waste management. Uh, through entire food system and production, we, we can see that uh, we can minimize production of waste during the entire chain. So from production, post-production, diets and consumption, and also waste disposal, we need to think about food loss and food waste. Uh, so 30% of global energy consumption comes from the food systems. And one third of food that is produced is never consumed. So this is really important question. Either lost in the field or on the way to the consumer or wasted in institutional settings, stores, homes, or restaurants. So we are wasting our food and we need to think about how to reuse this, this waste because it's, nothing is waste until it's wasted. So uh, if food loss and food waste were a country, it would be the third biggest source of greenhouse gas emissions in the world. Also, uh, during uh, the, along the entire food chain, we can see on this graph food wastage footprint and climate change. So, for con uh, we can see contribution of each commodity to carbon footprint and food wastage. So, we can see that uh, in example for fruits, we can see low carbon food footprint. Uh, also. For oil crops and pulses, we can also see the lowest carbon footprint. On the other hand, in example in production, we can see also a large percentage of carbon footprint and also large percentage of food wastage when dealing in the production with cereals and vegetables. Also we need to think about how to reduce this food waste. Uh, so for uh, food flow, we can see that we have uh, different uh, parts of food production. And also we can quantify food waste per product group along, along the food supply chain in European Union. So we, have, we can see primary production, we can see processing, retail, and consumption. So we need to monitor the food waste, food waste for each category. In example, sugar beets, oil crop and nuts, potatoes, vegetables, fruit, cereals. So also byproducts. We need to think about how to reduce, recycle and reuse byproducts. And also we can see that food waste along the food chain is in total 129 megaton. So what do we need to think about food waste? We need to find the solution. How can we impact, reduce the impact to the environment? How can we use existing pathway to valorize food waste? And also how to use techno-economic assessment to bring value-added products in the market? We uh, also can see uh, benefits of reducing food loss. So increase in food availability, then to boost productivity and economic growth. Also, we will be able to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, also to reduce pressure on land and water resources and make agri-food systems more resilient and sustainable. Also, we have different kind of calculator, calculators presented uh, in the web also, we can find uh, different kind of softwares, calculators that are, that are free. And also we can calculate assessment of environmental and economic benefits of food waste prevention actions. So we need to invest into prevention of uh, waste and then to avoid food waste. Then we will have uh, definitely a benefit. So we need to stop food waste, then to impact consumer behavior change, also the, in the food chain production and in example we can target consumers and we can tar target stage of supply chain in household to reduce food waste 
Uh, regarding footprints, uh, during the entire food chain, we have different parts of food production. So in, uh, in the way of thinking how to reduce food waste, also we need to think how to valorize those productions and also how to valorize food products and also how to reduce food waste. For the food production, we also can calculate really the impact to the environment. Also, we can calculate economy parameters and also we need to think about impact to the society. So regarding different kind of footprints, we have different kind of footprints like carbon footprint, water footprint, nitrogen footprint, energy footprint, and also in general environmental footprint. So really we need to think about the footprints in different kind of manufacturing, different kind of processing, different kind of transport and distribution, preparation and consumption. Then we need to think about waste management, then land using, using of different kind of natural resources, water and energy consumption, deforestation, farming. So we need to think about, about different footprints in agri-food sector. Uh, ecological footprint, so it measures how fast we consume resources and generate waste. So also we have different kind of uh, footprints, in example, for uh, energy consumption, or we can calculate carbon footprint. Then also we can uh, car calculate different kind of footprints, in example, uh, in production of food, then in production uh, of seafood than uh, in usage of land. And we can compare this, how fast nature can absorb our waste and generate new, new resources. So in general, this is something that we need to think about. So in uh, environmental footprint family, uh, we can uh, calculate and think about different kind of footprints, like land, land food footprint, green water footprint, blue water footprint, Phosphorus footprint, nitrogen footprint, chemical footprint, nitrogen footprint, ozone footprint, biodiversity footprint, carbon or uh, global gas emissions footprint. So really we need to think about how are we impact climate change, ocean, ocean acidification, biosphere integrity. Also how, can, how are we impacting earth surface change, fresh water, water use, so how we ca can we uh, impact to the environment uh, where we are living? So we have different kind of uh, carbon uh, footprint, uh, carbon water uh, waste footprint calculators that we can use. Also we have, uh, we can uh, valorize and see how we, uh, we are producing and going in line with sustainable development goals. So then for sustainable development goals, we can set those goals into environmental footprint impact categories like SDGs 3rd, 6th, 13th, 14th and 15th. So we can see the impact to the environment. Also then we can set a different kind of boundaries in example to calculate life cycle impact of production and impact to the environment. And also we need to set those boundaries. So uh, in the idea of uh, food waste prevention and uh, in monitoring and valorization of food waste, so it's really important to have a food waste management plan. And uh, the future uh, steps that uh, we need to think that they are really important is the usage of life cycle assessment and digitalization in the entire food supply chain. So from raw material, breeding, and then uh, through uh, production, then to through transport and then to the final uh, cons uh, consumer. So we need to implement digitalization in uh, each step and then to uh, use calculation life, uh, like life cycle assessment to valorize the production. Uh, life cycle assessment is a technique to evaluate the environmental impact associated with the life of a product or service from cradle to grave. So each product has an impact uh, on the environment, such as CO2 uh, footprint, land use, and use of resources. Environmental footprint, life cycle assessment, carbon footprinting are methods to investigate the environmental performance of products in supply chain. So it allows to compare the environmental performance of different products, including information of CO2 emissions, 
land use and the identification of hotspots. Furthermore, those methods give insight in possible environmental improvements in the supply chain. So we need to think about food production uh, in terms of climate protection. So 30% of, uh, so of uh, EU greenhouse gas emissions comes from the food systems. Global food system is becoming more energy intensive with almost a third of food system emissions coming directly from energy consumption. Globally, energy use at the farm gate is also increasing. So an average food system produces two tons of carbon dioxide equivalent emission per person every year. So this is something that we need to think about. So regarding food systems, uh, we need to emphasize that we have different parts of production, different kind of food supply chain, different kind of uh, production, transport, what uh, we need to think about as a food systems. So we need to think about land-based so pro to produce raw material. Then we need to think about uh, industry, energy consumption, waste. Then we need to think about different kind of uh, areas in the food production, like production, packaging, retail, consumption, processing, transport, end of life. So this is something that we need to think about. And then each and every part of those steps, we need to think about how to reduce land usage, how to reduce energy consumption, how to reduce food waste. Climate change continues to impact global temperature. So this is something that we need to think about. There are the world's rapidly growing population is ever more reliant on increasingly vulnerable food consumption. New technologies, products and approaches are required to mitigate and adapt to climate change. So also we have uh, EDGAR, so it's emissions database for global atmospheric research. And new findings show that more than a third, so 34% of all man-made uh, greenhouse gas emissions are generated by food systems. So uh, also we need to think about uh, what are we doing uh, in our food processing, in food supply and chain, and really think about excellence. So to think about policy, to think about what is scientifically relevant. So uh, what is really important to implement from a database to think about how to produce food and also how to reduce energy and consumption and how to reduce environmental impact. Also regarding uh, emissions database for global uh, atmospheric research, we can see that uh, most than 50% of uh, gas shares emissions from food systems are from land-based usage. So also we need to think about what are the uh, gas, uh, global gas uh, emissions for the energy consumption, for uh, industry processing, and also we need to think about waste and waste reduction and also decreasing of uh, gas emissions because of waste management. Uh, also we can see uh, different, uh, we can see diagram for uh, gas emissions from the global food systems and also we need to think about different kind of gases that are produced and also in different kind of sectors. Also methane is really important uh, gas that we need to think about. So it's not just the CO2, also different kind of F gases, different kind of nitrogen uh, gases that are produced uh, in entire food processing sector and in the different kind of processing stages. So we really need to think about this, this graph and this diagram. Also we have uh, FAO from uh, FAO start from uh, Food and Agriculture Organization and also we can track in example for uh, each production for food security, nutrition, SDG indicators. So we can track what is the situation about uh, gas emissions, what is the situation about climate change, and also we can track what is happening in the, uh, the entire world regarding food production. What is really important is the increase in temperature because of the production of, because of the productions and also because of the usage of huge amount of energy and therefore also producing CO2 and also methane. So we need to think about different kind of emissions, in example, in the entire world. And also we need to think about production of CO2 in kilotons per country and 
we need to think about how to reduce those CO2 uh, emissions. Also for the Food Systems uh, Summit uh, in uh, la last year, in 2021, uh, that is uh, held by United Nations, food and agriculture, uh, both as a sector, heavily affected is, was uh, they were heavily affected by the climate crisis and as a major source of greenhouse uh, gas emissions. So food became uh, a major topic of discussion in light of several significant new governmental uh, commitments. So uh, we need to think about and also at the COP26 in Glasgow, at the meeting uh, there were discussion about slashing methane emission so uh, we need uh, to think about that nearly half of which come from livestock and also on preserving forests rather than cutting them down to make way for agriculture. Also, we need to think about investment in food systems also because of the innovation through, uh, in example, there is a mission in the US and the United Arab Emir Emirates that led to an initiative called the Agriculture Innovation Mission for Climate. And uh, 35 countries and several dozen uh, non-governmental partners committed to support. So, uh, Agricultural Innovation Mission for Climate is joint initiative by US and United Arab Emirates. And uh, for cli there is, uh, this is an initiative for climate that seeks to address uh, climate change and global hunger by unita uh, uniting participants to significantly, significantly increase investment in uh, definitely to support climate smart agriculture and food system innovation over five years. So idea is definitely to see the uh, innovation and uh, different kind of uh, steps to reduce uh, energy consumption, to reduce uh, gas emissions and also to think about waste and to use waste management. In plant-based food industry, also we need to think about different kind of technologies that are impacting the environment. So in general, in the sup supply chain, so we need to think about different carbon footprints and food wastage. So therefore, I think it is really important to think about the partnership for the goal. So this is, uh, this is 17 Sustainable Development Goal, and we need to join forces with farmers, food processors, food traders, consumers, and also other stakeholders like policymakers, academia, assessment services, definitely to go in line yeah, with uh, sustainable development goals uh, in the entire food supply chain. Uh, also, we need to think about stakeholders and uh, to uh, see the best way how to implement different kind of stakeholders in achieving SDGs in the food supply chain and also in the definitely entire food systems. So regarding sustainability, we need to think about three pillars of sustainability, so impact to the society, environment and economic, economy. So we need to think about how can we benefit uh, our, uh, to our society, environment and economy. So we then, uh, we can have, we have different kind of uh, EU funded projects that are discussing about this. So we have uh, different kind of examples like fair chain, uh, call fresh, smart chain, so smart solutions in food supply chain. So regarding uh, production, first that we need to think is to have food safety. So this is really the uh, most important thing, to have a food sa a safe uh, food and uh, to reduce potential head risk from consumption. Then also we need to think about uh, Sustainable Development Goal, uh, goal 12, that is uh, really responsible production and consumption. And also we need to go in line with sustainability regarding food supply chain and also to go toward quality food in the mind and with thinking of sustainability. So to, to reduce, refuse, reuse, repair, recycle and rot. So six R's. Therefore, we need to focus on zero waste production and there is a need to obtain efficient, low energy, low temperature processing by achieving food safety and food quality. So we need to go towards technologies that will use less energy and that will produce less emission of CO2. So we need to think about lower water usage and also to uh, go to uh, clean label production and to claim that something is cleaner production. Also, we need to think about waste management and uh, think how to reduce and reuse by 
Therefore, it's really important uh, that, uh, as we discussed before, to implement digitalization and optimization into, into food processing sector. So the idea is definitely to use smart sensors, so to monitor quality and to reduce different kind of inefficiencies. Uh, therefore, then we need to think about food waste management by using of big data to optimize the system. Also, we need to think about Industry 4.0 and 5.0 and going towards smart factories. And there are new opportunities to implement elements of Industry 4.0 in non-thermal processing. So the idea is the application of Internet of Things, smart control of the process, big data optimization, and definitely as well sustainable production and monitoring. And we have the new era of Internet of Non-Thermal Food Processing Technologies. So we need to think about Food Industry 4.0 and sustainability. Definitely we have tools to present and to prepare food industry for zero. So we have different kind of different kind of uh, Internet of Things, different kind of sensors and uh, actuators, and we can use different kind of tools to uh, go in line with sustainable development goals. So the idea is definitely to focus on application of non-thermal advanced and advanced thermal technologies in processing to obtain cleaner technologies and to think about life cycle uh, of product or systems. Also, we need to think about innovation in the processing line of implementing non-thermal processing through interdisciplinary interprofessional cooperation. And the focus is on applying elements of Industry 4.0 in complete product development and digitalized elements of non-thermal processing. So when discussing about innovation, uh, about advanced thermal and non-thermal technologies, we need to think about technology readiness level. And also we need to think uh, about where we are standing. So definitely thermal processing are, uh, are uh, developing uh, also advanced thermal processing. And by using thermal processing like pasteurization and sterilization, definitely we can assure uh, food safety. But also we need to think about energy uh, consumption and we need to think about reducing energy consumption. Therefore, we need to innovate in the terms of uh, advanced thermal and also non-thermal processing. Therefore, reaching technology readiness level to be presented uh, into the industry. So by using innovation, we need to reach TRL uh, 6, 7, 8, and 9, and definitely to uh, demonstrate technology uh, to the uh, industry and also to uh, reduce the impact to the environment. Also, we need to prepare a system prototype and also to complete the system testing and definitely to uh, pre uh, pre uh, present this and implement uh, in the industry. So we need to uh, prepare competitive manufacturing in the case of key enable, enabling technologies. Therefore, we need to think about Industry 4.0 and uh, also Industry 5.0 and think about Society 5.0. So we have uh, had different kind of phases of industrialization for industry, uh, the first industrial uh, revolution, uh, that was uh, 120 years ago, and now we are in the era of Industry 5.0. Therefore, we need to think about how can we uh, cooperate man and machine, and definitely to prevent, prevent uh, the waste and wasting, including industrial upcycling. So definitely we need to think about different kind of waste that is produced along the food supply chain, and also we can see that majority is agricultural waste in the food supply chain, also different kind of forestry waste, and uh, we have different kind of organic household waste, food processing waste, and sludge. So we need to think about how can we reduce those waste. So we need to incorporate waste management into the supply chain. So food systems can contribute significantly, significantly to greenhouse gas emissions, and this can be addressed by reducing waste or directing it back into the supply chain. Uh, then we have different kind of uh, different kind of documents, and we have also the SAPIA and uh, regarding uh, sustainability. It's a document that is discussing about sustainable food systems. So you can easily file, find this uh, on the web. Uh, the transition to more to more just and sustainable food system needs to be coordinated and at multiple level of governance and involve a range of actors in both land-based and marine environments. Uh, we also need to think about and to change how our society consumes food. So we must first change people's routines, habits and norms, and behavior change is best affected with joined up actions, addressing group rather than individuals. Also different kind of taxation and regulation are key ways to drive change. Also, we need to 
pro uh, propose different kind of policies in agriculture and fisheries that can offer great opportunities for development, robustness and sustainability in food production. Also, we have different kind of documents that are, can be easily found on the web, like scientific opinion, sustainable food systems by SAPIA, different kind of documents regarding sustainable food systems, different kind of uh, updated scoping paper regarding sustainable food systems, different kind of reports, different kind of uh, independence expert reports. So th those uh, documents can be easily found on the web. Therefore, we need to think about sustainability in the entire uh, chain, food supply chain from raw material or food safety, quality and sustainability. So by means of energy, economy, environment, through process, product and waste. So we need to have circular economy approach, and this presents a compelling way to stop and even reverse the damaging relationship between economic growth, consumption and use of natural resources. So the idea is to renew and regenerate, protect and extend, and then create a, a value from thin air, and also turning even the most challenging waste into the value. The concept of waste doesn't really exist in nature. So dead leaves and uh, animal droppings, for example, are critical fuel for a new life. So innovative businesses are also looking at how we can tackle challenging waste at the end of use. So the idea is to use life cycle assessment. So life cycle assessment and carbon footprints give insight in the environmental impact in the supply chain of a product. So carbon footprint is focused on the environmental impact category, uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Meanwhile, uh, life cycle assessment takes more impact categories into account, such as land use, water use, and acidification. So it's the most comprehensive method for assessing the overall environmental impact of products, process, or services through all life stages, uh, cycle stages. So from raw material extraction through production, distribution, use, waste management, and final disposal. So it's really important to understand the impact of our product uh, and the impact on the environment at each stage of its uh, life cycle. So the aim is definitely to reduce operational costs, costs by influencing, prioritizing and reducing ecological footprint. We have different kind of databases that can be used in, in uh, those calculations. So we have, for example, food, uh, World Food uh, Life Cycle Assessment data, uh, Database. Also, producers and uh, industry, there are uh, also uh, posting on their uh, web pages, so the impact to the environment and also producing the sustainability approach. So you can, in example, is, uh, easily find uh, the carbon uh, emission footprint on uh, uh, industri industrial uh, products. Uh, also, this is uh, one example uh, where we need to think about uh, plant-based meat and also plant-based products. So the idea is definitely to think about energy consumption, greenhouse gas emission, uh, eutrophication and land use. In example, for beef, there is a really large energy uh, consumption for the beef production. Also, really huge amount of green greenhouse gas emissions are produced when we are uh, producing uh, beef products. So we need to think about plant-based meat, microproteins and cell-based meat. So we have different kind of startups and different kind of uh, companies like Beyond Meat and Impossible Foods. Like they have uh, both re uh, released life cycle assessment for their, uh, their plant-based beef products. Eutrophication potential and land use requirements for these products are projected to be significantly lower than metrics reported for factory farm animal-based beef, pork and chicken, while greenhouse gas emissions fall between metrics for pork and chicken and energy consumption exceeded that of pork and chicken. Also, we need to think the, about different kind of plant-based products. Also, extradited vegetable meat alternatives consisting of proteins combined with uh, amaranth or buckwheat flour, and the vegetable milk alternative made from lentil proteins were shown to have the potential to generate significantly less environmental impact than their animal-based uh, counterparts. So, in most of the environmental indicators examined. Also, we need to underline uh, underlined uh, field uh, to fork life cycle assessment models that include several variants of both plant and animal foods. And the optimized plant-based foods show a clear potential for improvement in the environmental footprints. Also, we can have different kind of extruded meat substitutes, 
also high protein content, milk-like meat -like, uh, text meat texture, meat processing uh, compatibility, and they are very popular as the main ingredients of plant-based uh, burger patties. So life cycle assessment can be performed and compared to the environmental performance of different kind of uh, technologies. And also we can see the uh, impact uh, to the environment and also the entire life cycle assessment uh, calculations. So definitely we need to think about food waste and how to reduce food waste because uh, food waste along the food chain, just to uh, re recall and uh, that you can remember, so the food waste along the food chain is 129 megatons. So definitely we need to think about farm-to-farm -farm strategy, food loss and food waste prevention, sustainable food production, sustainable food processing and distribution, and sustainable